So let's think of a little bit about powers of zero. So what do you think zero to the first power to the first power is going to be? And I encourage you to pause this video. Well, let's just think about it. One definition of exp exponentiation is that you start with a one, you start with a one, and then you multiply this number times the one, one time. So this is literally going to be one times let me do it in the right colors. One times zero. You're multiplying the one by zero one time. One times zero, well, that's just going to be equal to zero. Now, what do you think zero squared or zero to the second power is going to be equal to? Well, once again, you could, one way of thinking about this is that you start with a one, you start with a one. and we're going to multiply it by zero two times. So times zero times zero. Well, what's that going to be? Well, you multiply anything times zero, once again, you are going to get zero. And I think you see a pattern here. If I take zero, if I take zero to any non-zero number, so to the power of any non-zero, so there's some non-zero number, non-zero number, then this is going to be equal to zero. This is going to be equal to zero. Now, this raises a very interesting question. What happens at zero to the zero power? So here, you know, if zero to the millionth power is going to be zero. Zero to the trillionth power is going to be zero. Even negative or fractional exponents, which we haven't talked about yet, as long as they're non-zero, this is just going to be equal to zero. Kind of makes sense. But now let's think about what zero Let's think about what zero to the zeroth power is, because this is actually a fairly deep question. And I'll give you a hint. Well, I'll, I'll, actually, why don't you pause the video and think a little bit about what zero to the zeroth, zero to the zeroth power should be. Well, there's two trains of thought here. You could say, look, zero to some non-zero number is zero. So why don't we just extend this to all numbers and say zero to any number should be zero. And so maybe you should say that zero to the zeroth power is zero. But then there was another train of logic that we've already learned that any non-zero number, so non-zero number, if you take any non-zero number and you raise it to the zeroth power, we've already established that this is, you start with a one and you multiply it times that non-zero number zero times. So this is always going to be equal to one for a non-zero number. So this is always going to be equal to one. So maybe you say, hey, maybe we should extend this to all numbers, including zero. So maybe zero to the zeroth power should be one. So we could make the argument that zero to the zeroth power should be equal to one. So you see a conundrum here, and there's actually really good cases. You can get actually fairly sophisticated with your mathematics, and there's really good cases for both of these, for zero to zeroth being zero, and zero to the zeroth power being one. And so when mathematicians get into this situation where they say, well, there's good cases for either, there's not a natural, a completely natural one, either of these definitions would lead to difficulties in mathematics. And so what mathematicians have decided to do is, for the most part, and you'll find people who will dispute this, people who say, no, I like one more than the other. But for the most part, this is left, this is left undefined. Zero to the zero is not defined by, at least just kind of more conventional mathematics. In some use cases, it might be defined to be one of these two things. So zero to any non-zero number, you're going to get zero. Any non-zero number to the zeroth power, you're going to get one. But zero to the zero, that's a little bit of a question mark.